Hello everyone. I thought I'd show you an unusual Kerbal launch. Um, this isn't something you see every day, so... I need to launch this heavy, heavy base, but I'm not allowed to use any struts. Uh, struts really break the game. They're, they make the game way too easy, so I've outlawed them. I'm also thinking about outlawing fuel pipes, because they also make the game very easy. Uh, but when you're trying to launch something heavy and you're not allowed to use struts, it's quite difficult to get a launch base that's heavy enough to actually put the object into orbit. And the second problem is that it's very difficult to stabilize the payload so that it doesn't wobble around. And both of those are severe problems with this launch. So you can see that I've got these boosters running, and they'll run out of fuel first, but I don't have any plans to jettison them. And the reason I'm not going to jettison them is because these guys here, once the fuel starts to run out, they start to bow upwards and then things get really dicey. So by leaving these as a weight on the outer lower portion, I actually managed to keep that under control. Uh, and it means that they continue to be stable up until the last couple of uh, you know, kilotons of fuel, rather than almost immediately requiring me to throttle back. But I will have to throttle back because this is a weak joint. And you can see that they've gone, but I'm not getting rid of them. Uh, this is a weak joint. If I tip going very fast at all, this will bend at this position here because this has always been the weak joint. And normally you'd fix that just by running a strut, right? But I'm not allowed to have any struts. So that means I've got to continue my, my stable vertical ascent, and I've got to keep my speed under control. So I can't allow myself to get terribly fast right out of the gate. Uh, I've actually uh, weighted this system so that it should be okay. I shouldn't... Oh, you can see I'm already starting to bend. Um, okay, maybe I'll maybe I'll pull back. That's that's a little too dicey for me. Uh, and it's the, just the just the for, force of the air pressure against this massive surface area with this one weak joint connecting them is what's causing the issues. Once I get out into into deep enough space uh, that the atmosphere is no longer an issue, then that will resolve itself quite naturally. So what I'm doing is I'm waiting until we are hitting 120. There we go. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of these guys because they are uh, in my way. There we go. And now I've got to really scramble to get the, uh, the horizontal velocity I need here. So we're going to tip. The gimbals built into these heavy 3.5 meter rockets are very valuable, um, but it does mean that you can really only tip while the rockets are firing, because uh, otherwise you just don't have enough force to rest all this fuel around. I do have some fuel on the space base itself, but I'm hoping to not use it much, if at all. Uh, come on, come on, you don't need to go that far down. Just, uh, so let's put, put this up. Punch it. And that should do to circularize our orbit somewhat. Now we are dropping down because I want to keep this under control, and since I'm over here, um, if I just blow straight east, I'll end up raising my apoapsis to, you know, 180 or 200, which would be a little too high. Um, I want to keep it at maybe 140 at most. But since I'm in deep space, there's no risk of this uh, air pressure bending this up anymore. So I'm going to go ahead and deploy my radiators, just to keep myself from overheating. I've got a pretty large reactor um, in this little, this little base, in this massive base, and I don't want to risk uh, any kind of shutdown just because I hadn't put out my uh, my uh, heat sinks. I might as well also eject these while we're here, and I can do that simply by... there we are. Now, I actually don't think that's going to work. Uh, the last time I experimented with uh, Infernal Robotics and attaching these things to uh, deployable uh, gantries, uh, it caused a lot of oscillation, and it ended up not being something that could be used. Anyone who docked would cause a violent vibration between the ships, and things would go south too quickly. All right, so we're coming up on 140 here.
and apparently the, uh, the police are having fun. Alright, so now we're at 140, and we're just going to go ahead and move up to that area, but since we're out of the atmosphere, we might as well turn on our science projects and our various uh, dishes. So we've got all of these tiny communications, and I stupidly forgot to um, bind them to a key, so I'm afraid you're going to see me manually turn all of them on. And these dishes, I, the real reason I'm putting this up here is because of these dishes. Uh, these have a long enough reach for me to fire off a probe to Jewel. And, uh, and that means that I'll be able to, um, uh, to actually do some Jewel research. And it's actually quite difficult for me to uh, do any more research at this stage um, without having a lander. Uh, and I don't allow myself to broadcast science, so I have to bring every piece of science that I create back and that does make it quite difficult uh, to do things like land on Duna and then bring it back. I also have deadly re-entry and a couple of other things to make my game as hard as possible. Come on. Oh, did I run out of fuel? I did. Not a big deal. Uh, we'll just ditch this thing. Go off that direction somewhere. And then we will reorient ourselves. To give you an idea, this is the Poodle engine, which uh, you may be familiar with as uh, the same diameter as the mainsail, which is pretty much the stock engine that people use in vanilla for launching. So this is not a small ship. This is a very large base. Oh, okay, my, uh, I thought I was actually in more of a stable orbit than that, but whatever. Should be fine. Just need to get this up to 140. go. 141 and 140. That is close enough to circular for my needs. Uh, so what we've got here is we've got a fully staffed research station. And that in, that this has a, a bunch of mods to make things more difficult, including a life support mod. So these, these guys here uh, need to uh, need to make sure that they don't run out of food or water or air. But you can see that I've got quite a lot. Um, this amount is good for something like 20 years, so I'm not terribly concerned about them running out of supplies. But they do need to be here to repair these dishes, which degrade steadily over time. And in addition, they need to be here to man their science post, this guy here, um, because they uh, that can't be done without people. And all of these things generate science without the need to go anywhere, but with the addition of these long-range dishes, I will be able to, to go out to Jewel and get more science done. Which one of these guys is in the science by there? The Enford and Obden will go do the science. There we go. Boarded without even using the ladder, because he's a ninja like that. Also, this reprocessed nuclear fuel will be valuable because we actually have a nuclear reactor and it's a very early, um, dull thing. It's, uh, it's, uh, uh, it's one of the first stage nuclear reactors, and that means that it runs through its fuel quite rapidly. Um, there it is, the fission reactor. Uses UF-4. Alright, so that's how you put up a heavy base in uh, in orbit when you don't have any struts and I think that I wanted to show you um, Dudeman here will show you what it's like uh, the size of it from the outside here so as you can see this base is significantly larger than it looked when strapped to 3.5 meter rockets um, this is a full-sized base 
uh, that has you know a couple thousand units of fuel ready and available for docking bays, for major satellites, uh, more four major satellite dishes, and four radio antennas, and four deep satellite, uh, four deep ray, uh, uh, and uh, telescope arrays with the associated helium, and it's a big, big station. Uh, and I managed to get it up with no struts. And I think I could manage to get it up with no struts and no fuel lines. Hmm. That is a very, very tempting restriction. Well, anyhow, that's it.